Hello. Welcome to Knitting My Shit Together, a knitting and fiber arts podcast where neurodivergence and yarn collide. I'm Willa. I use she, her pronouns. And you can find me on the Instawebs at What Willa Make and Tomboy Femme Bag. My name's Sam, I use she, they pronouns, and you can find me on Instagram at Queer of Pentacles Makes. Yay! Where are you, Sam? (sighs) Oh, where am I? I'm in Harrisburg, and this is my cat, Louie. That's Louie. Yeah. Um, okay, what's new with you? Um... I mean, it's starting to get warmer, which is nice. I've been spending a little bit more time outside, so I'm getting seeds planted for the garden. Um, I bought yarn to dye yarn Ooh. for fun, so that'll be a fun experiment. And I think during the summer, I might start saving plants to do some like natural dyeing. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Awesome. That's all. Not much new here. It's got we had we've had three days in a row now where it's in the sixties, which is like a miracle in Minnesota in March. Mm-hmm. So uh I've been biking. Nice. And that's been fun. But also reorganizing a lot in my studio. Like I always am trying to tweak how it's set up and mm-hmm. <sighs> doing the things, doing the quarantine things too. Oh, I also, um, I forgot. I was on a podcast. I think it's getting released today, which is Monday of this week. Um, my friend runs a podcast called Historically Accurate. So she has all of her friends on talking about like weird things that happen in history. So I was in the most recent episode talking about Friends of Dorothy, which is really interesting. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. I watched the Meghan Markle Prince Harry interview. Did you watch it? No. That's some racist <laughs> shit. Yeah. I was like, what? I'm glad they got to speak their truth. Yeah. Instead of having to count on people who don't have their best interests in mind to speak it for them. Yeah. What else? That's it. You know. Plotting along. (laughs) Um, I signed up to get notified when I can sign up to get the vaccine. (laughs) I qualify now uh, with Pennsylvania's distribution plan. So um, because of my weight, but yeah. So I hate voicemail. I hate it. Like I'll let my voicemail get to like 70 messages Mm -hmm. And then I'll just look through them. I don't know. I just don't like them. And so I'm always paranoid now that they've called me and it's going to go to voicemail and I'm not going to see it for a really long time. I specifically told them only to email me because that's the only thing I'll see. Yeah. I, I, so I was going to go to their site and check what preferences I'd put and hopefully it's texty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Should we talk yarn and knitting before the mental health moment? Yeah. I'm going to put the cat down so I can actually hold things. (laughs) What do you got for FOs? I have two things. So I already posted about this on Instagram. I sewed my first dress number one. Did you like my Um, comment? Everybody has a gray one. We all match. (laughs) But do you like my comment? I said, yeah. welcome to the cult. That welcome is the to dress the cult. The mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I got linen almost a year ago now. It was like my beginning of quarantine, like, oh, I must do something different kind of thing. And I left it sitting in my stash for a really long time until finally I was like, I need to just do it. I think it was that, like, since I haven't really sewn a lot of garments for myself, I was like, oh, I don't want to, like, mess it up and then waste the fabric. But it's fabric. You can get more, like, whatever. And, yeah, it turned out pretty good. And I used my tag from Stitch Collective that says fuck sizes. I like your gold uh, bias tape. Yeah, it's the only one I had. And I was like, you know what? That might look kind of cute. And it does. It does. 
and let me just try to climb back in my lap. I mean, how do you go happen. wrong with a Grello dress number one, really? Exactly. And it has pockets. Pockets are power. <laughs> yes. So I'm very happy with that. I also have the dress number three pattern, I think. So I'm going to look for fabric so that I can make that. Yeah, I have, I made two dress number threes that I shortened. But I think what I'm planning on doing is I got this beautiful black cotton poplin. Mm -hmm. And I I wanted to make a caftan. But what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is take the dress number three and lengthen it. And maybe adjust the sleeve situation a little bit and make a caftan from it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I had to shorten this a lot because I am short. So if I had made it the correct length, it would went past my knees. And that wasn't the look I was going for. So... <laughs> Well, I'm taller than you, but I shorten mine a lot because I want it to be more tunicky. Tunic, yeah. More like quads are a little bit longer than tunicky. Yeah, I have mine like right above the knee, which is kind of where I like to wear stuff anyway. So mine's like mid thigh, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I made that, and then last night I finished spinning this, which is uh, the fiber was from Nest Fiber Studio. And the color was Sprout, and it's Falkland. Man, that's pretty. I love it so much. And, like, so I was going through my fiber stash, and I just told Becca to pick which one they wanted <laughs> out of my stash. And they picked that one because it's very springy colors. So, yeah, I really love how it turned out. It's really nice, and it's so plush. Squishy. That's a really so. pretty color together. Yeah, I really like it. It has that good pink that we like. <laughs> the dirty pink. The dirty pink. Um, yeah, so I made that. Louie's behind me now. Hi, Louie. <laughs> Louie's like an unofficial co-host. Yeah, he's kind of crashing the podcast today. Hi. Oh, good. Hi, Hi Louie. Louie. Um, I have one FO to finish because I have finished other things, but they're gifts. Mm. that the recipient will not receive until tomorrow. Ah. Uh. Um, but I have a spinning FO. Ooh. This. Ooh. Yeah. This fiber was a birthday gift from Yelly. Yelly Knits to me. And it is from Redfish Dye Works. It was four ounces of 50 silk, 50 camel. It is so nice. freaking soft and delicious. It is. And I love it. I like the colors too. Yeah, I like them. Nice and woodsy. Yeah, it was a fun spin. We don't okay. have a lot this week, do we? We're not. I think I'm at the point of quarantine where I'm not super chatty right now. Yeah. Like tangential Which... because I can't even. What can I go on a tangent about? Yeah, nothing like, happened. <laughs> here I am, in my basement still, and <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. All right. What are your whips? Are your whips. Uh, where should I start? I have three. Oh, yeah. um, well, these are here. So I've been working on these socks for Becca, um, and it's the hobby yarn that I got. Mm -hmm. um, so I finished the first one this weekend. I don't know what this... Um, color I used for the heel was it was just a random mini that I had um, but yeah so speckly cute also springy and then I'm most of the way through the second one so those should be done soon um, and I had I had Becca try them on yesterday because I'm I'm still not good at making consistently length socks for some reason like I just every single one that I think is going to be the right length, it's not. And half my socks I end up giving to Becca because um, their feet are longer than mine. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so they fit perfectly. So I'm happy about that. And then my other knitting whip is the Woodlark Shawl by Fiber Tails. Um, I got a lot done on this. I'm in the second to last section now. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. So there's just like one more section of brown and then like the end and then it's steeked. So that's <laughs> something to look forward to, I guess. 
Um, but yeah, I really like this. And the yarn that I used is uh, Fiberarium Conservatory Sock. So they used to be local, but she moved up to New York. So, But my one uh, local yarn store still sells her stuff. So yeah, I don't normally go for like a tan and brown kind of thing. But my my thing with this is like, that's I liked how it looked in the picture, like in the so, example pictures. Go on. Um, and my plan is that this will be my shawl for the Ren Fair, so that I don't have to always wear a coat when it's kind of the in-between, because our Ren Fair runs from like August through the fall, mm -hmm. so it gets really chilly, so yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty complex, though. <laughs> like, I have to actually, like, sit and focus on that. So that's why I'm trying to keep, like, socks. I'm trying to keep, like, one complicated project and one easy project so that I have something for whatever mood I'm in. And then um, I've been working a lot more on embroidery and cross-stitch. So um, I just picked this up the other day again, and now I really want to finish it. Um, this is from Cozy Blue. I like that one. I thought about getting that one because of the moons. It has the moons and like mushrooms. I love mushrooms. So I think Kat had done this one, Marshmallow Witch. They had, oh, um, yeah. And when I had talked to them about it, I ended up ordering this one. And I have one that's like a moth, too, that I really like. Oh, I've so. seen that one, too. It's pretty. Yeah, cool. it's yeah. like the blue with the red moth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I've been working slowly on doing this. I'm trying to get better at embroidery. Um, last year, I had embroidered a hat. Or no, it was the year before. Time is meaningless. Um, <laughs> the year before, I embroidered a hat for Becca for um, their birthday. Um but I'm still, I like, I ended up buying a ton of hats because I just want to make myself a bunch of hats. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, mm, I want to practice a little bit more before I make another hat because that was a lot of time put into something and it was a little shaky. So, yeah. So I'm working on embroidery. Pretty. Um, I have some spooning on my wheel right now that I started this morning, which is I um, created by LCD. I love all of her fiber. I'm like... Mm -hmm. There's there's barely a single colorway she's dyed that I would not spin. And one month I signed up for a mystery month thing where you can, like, her club, you can, like, just go for one month, you know? Uh -huh. So I did one month, and she sent a sock yarn, cause she, or a fiber. She sent It's like a super wash merino nylon blend, so I'm spinning that right now because I've never spun my own socks. So Neither have I. I want to do that. Um, yeah. I'm also in the middle of sewing, interestingly enough, for dress number ones for Yelly. Um, Ooh. They're all cut out. The first one is partially sewn, but I was dilly-dallying on the cutting out, and so I did that all yesterday so that I can just, sewing them does not take long, and cutting out is the part I enjoy the least. Yeah. Same. And part of it was those studio rearranging. Oh, this is Dinah. 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 Dinah, look. You're, she's not as friendly Friends. as Louie. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's a bitchy little Tori, which is why I love oh. her. But yeah. So anyway, um, I rearranged the studio so that I could have push in the shipping area I have over there that I never actually use as a shipping area and doesn't get used and gets trashed. I mm -hmm. pushed three tables together so I could have a giant cutting table so that I wouldn't Ooh. hate cutting out patterns so much. And it worked because I cut out three dresses. Nice. So I'm going to work on sewing those. That's another whip I have going. And then finally, my cozy classic raglan. Ooh. I have about from the booby stitch marker. This is by Bunny and Toots. That's awesome. And um <laughs> I have I'm supposed to knit four inches from the boob. Um and then I start the um cuff. So I've tried it on and it fits really great and I love it. And I love how the yarn is knitting up. It looks really nice. I love everything about it. The yarn is uh, Malabrigo Dos Tierras in the fairy tale colorway. Um, I got it online from Die Hard Yarns. You can get it online from Die Hard too. 
what else? So yeah, hopefully this will maybe be done by next podcast recording. And I'm trying to think of other crap I'm working on. I don't know. I'm always, I haven't done a lot of knitting. I was on like a knitting streak when I finished my Ursa and started this. But mm-hmm. Lately I've been spinning and sewing. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah, I go through phases where like I want to work on other stuff more than my knitting. Yep. And you got it. It happens. It's the ebb and the flow. Yes. Especially of people like us that do all kinds of crafts. Yes. Like sometimes you just want to do one more than the other. But you know what I was thinking yesterday when I was on a walk? Hmm. I feel like they inform one another. Mm-hmm. I think I used to make rules, unshockingly. <laughs> that I would impose on myself where I would be like, okay, I can't learn this because I don't need another new craft hobby. Blah, blah. But then yeah. when I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I want. And I started and I allowed myself to take up as many hobbies within a area, like the mm-hmm. fiber arts. It's helped because they all build on and inform each other. So yeah. being a knitter has helped me as a sewer, which has helped me as a spinner. You know what I mean? It all. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That makes me happy that I learned that and quit making up inane rules for myself. Yep. Yeah, yeah I've stopped making. <laughs> I can't say that I've completely stopped making rules for myself, but the ones that I do still have are for my own good. Like the not buying yarn right yeah, now thing. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't bought any either. Because I'm like, I want to knit down my cabinet. Me too. I'm actually, um, we were talking about, so this was kind of a, a new development. We decided we're not going to move this year. We were really looking to buy a house, but um, Becca really wants to go back to school to be a teacher. So we decided it made more sense to wait until they're done with school. And then we'll look for a house when they find a job. Yeah. So then we're like, well, in the meantime, we still need to save money, but maybe instead of being so stingy, we can replace some of the stuff that we've been waiting to replace because we're like, we were going to just get rid of it, like get rid of our couch and get a new one when we moved. Well, I don't want to wait two years to get a new couch. Like I work and hang out on the same spot on my couch. So there's like a hole there. (laughs) So So I really want a new cushy couch. and we were also talking about getting a glass front yard yarn cabinet for me because this is not working because of this one. Because he likes to just kind of grab whatever. Unshell the yarn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I told you about where I got mine, right? No. Mine's from Ikea. We were going to look at Ikea, it's so really, yeah. Cat got one too. It's really reasonably priced. Mm-hmm. And they have it in different finishes, so I'll send you a link, and um, you can maybe put it in the show notes if anybody else wants to get one of these. Yep. They make excellent yarn cabinets. Annika built it for me when they were here. And, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I want to, I have like a cube storage thing over there under my fish tank, and um, it's just kind of full of crap, so I think I want to get like the glass front cabinet to hide my yarn in and then I can rearrange all my craft supplies and get them in a better position so yeah yeah we were gonna do like an Ikea trip so that we can look at couches and then get some new furniture so that's exciting I'll send you the link to that cabinet (laughs) Um, thank you so I don't have a like acquisition to share at the end do you me neither nope I haven't bought anything neither have I or food I got fabric (laughs) But it was one piece, a big piece of linen chambray for myself to make a dress that I already have mm-hmm. a pattern for. Yeah, that's pretty much the only thing I have planned is looking for fabric to make my next dress. But yeah, that was kind of the rule that I gave myself is I'll get one dress worth of fabric at a time. And that's, you know, good. And I still have a lot of like quilt projects that I want to do, too. So mm-hmm. I have plenty on my plate. Okay. Let's go on to do the mental health moment. Yes. Um, okay. Sam picked this week's mental health moment. Do you want to lead I the do. conversation around it, Sam? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, yeah, I picked this one because we had actually been talking about it. I think we talked about it a little bit in the episode last week. Yeah. Or two weeks ago. Um, so 
It is, wait, so we usually do the, this one is brought to you by the letter I and the number eight for the amount of hours of sleep they recommend that you get per night. Um, so we're going to talk about insomnia. Woo! Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put some links down in the description of a couple articles and just um, some information about insomnia. Um, I think most people kind of have an idea of what insomnia is, but it's more than what usually people think. So it's not just not being able to fall asleep, Lewis. <laughs> no, sir, you're not supposed to be up there. <laughs> um, yeah, so insomnia is not just not being able to fall asleep. It's also not being able to stay asleep and also waking up multiple times during the night and not being able to get back to sleep and not having restful sleep. <laughs> So all of that kind of falls under uh, insomnia. Um, it can be related to mental health issues and it can also um, make you have more mental health issues in the form of things like depression and anxiety because sleep is super important. <laughs> well, and also I want to point out, you know, if you're like, if you've, there are lots of different ways our sleep can be jacked that aren't all insomnia. So sure. like, for example, what I have is um, a circadian rhythm disorder, which is called delayed sleep phase syndrome. So what okay. that means is, yes, I can sleep. When I fall asleep, I'll sleep seven to eight hours. However, when left to its own devices without all the interventions I'm now doing, like my body is not will think that the time to go to bed is like six in the morning yeah 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 and um, like right now with all the interventions like i'm sitting at going to bed at 1 a.m and getting up by nine and that's like probably the best i can hope for like i don't yeah. think i'll ever be like go to bed at 10 get up at six person ever like i don't know that it's possible <laughs> I don't know that they have made enough drugs to do that yet. Yeah. <laughs> so go on. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I said was like, it is very common. It's a lot more common than people think because a lot of people don't, I think, realize that their issues are related to insomnia. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the lack of sleep can impact both your physical and mental health. So it is important that if you are having trouble sleeping, like, it's something that you can easily talk to your doctor about, and there are ways to deal with it. So, also, in, uh, in DBT, one of the things they talk about is there's a set of skills called the PLEA skills, and what that's the acronym, and what they have to do with is how to make yourself, how to know what makes you more vulnerable to intense emotions, and mm -hmm. how to reduce that vulnerability. And the P in the, um, and one of the letters, I don't know if it's the S, maybe it is. One of the letters in it is about sleep. Like they have like making sure you're getting seven to eight hours of sleep. And if you can't, like that's okay. Yeah. Like not everybody can in all situations and we're all at different places, but then recognize that if you're feeling intense emotions, factor that in like okay, yeah these could feel this intense right now because i'm lacking sleep well and honestly not everybody is a sleep all night kind of person like yeah. there are different sleep schedules some people do like half and half they'll do mm -hmm. half during the night and then take naps throughout the day like there's completely so many different valid ways of getting enough sleep but it is yeah. important to get enough sleep for your yeah, health. And I mean yeah. like enough sleep, not it doesn't have to be continuous. You're right. Valid point. Yeah, yeah. Seven to eight hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have dealt with insomnia pretty much my entire life. Um, I remember as a kid, um, you know, when you're when you're real little, a lot of the times when you have sleep problems, they kind of just chalk it up to, oh, well, kids have trouble sleeping sometimes. But the problem is mine never really went away. <laughs> Um, I remember when I was real little, my parents used to put Delilah on, on the radio. Love someone tonight. And I would, like, I was real little, but I would listen to Delilah because she has such a quiet, she soothing does. voice. And I would, like, She's they told so me, like, you cheesy, but she does have a very quiet, soothing voice. Very calming voice. So I would sit there and they're, like, if I couldn't fall asleep, it was, like, 
you just need to sit there and listen to her voice and think about what she's saying because um so they basically taught oh, you visualization mm -hmm. yeah um because a lot of the reasons why i have insomnia has to do with my anxiety um so i get the racing thoughts at night and i can't calm my brain down enough to be able to fall asleep so stuff like that and then dealing with insomnia isn't like a linear thing where like you figure out the one thing and then you're good for the rest of your life it has <laughs> it, it has changed so like when i got to middle school i was kind of okay for a while and then i became a teenager and i couldn't fall asleep at all again just completely like i would be awake till one two in the morning and then would have to sleep a little bit go to school and would fall asleep in my classes um, and I was lucky to have teachers that were very nice to me because I slept in a lot of classes in high school because I was exhausted. Um, and I think college, so I mean, nobody sleeps in college. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, too, it's important to consider that there's situational insomnia and then there's, mm -hmm. like, chronic disordered chronic. sleep and insomnia. Yeah. So, like... I, it doesn't surprise me at all right now if everybody doesn't have some form of insomnia during COVID. And it's I actually was just reading an article where they were talking about that yeah. because it's such a stressful situation yeah. and insomnia can be brought on by stress. Um, and, you know, some people don't have as much of a schedule as they used to because there's less things to do or people have lost their jobs or whatever. So but that to can follow, all... to follow up on what you said about um, you're not going to find one thing, like for me having gone a month now with like seven to eight hours a night which feels like a freaking miracle i know that if you're a person who has chronic insomnia or a sleep disorder that's not happening with me because of one thing it's happening mm -hmm. because of like six different things i'm doing all at once and oh yeah i will have to do those for the rest of my life and yep. probably tweak them like yep yeah yep yeah and for me like i've gotten to the point where because i take medication um i'm on an antidepressant called trazodone which i think you said you were on too um which is it's an antidepressant so it helps me with my depression but i take it at nighttime because it's it's known to make people drowsy so and as <laughs> kind of an off-brand thing they will also prescribe it for yeah, insomnia because my favorite sleep drug is ambien and some people hate ambien and get really terrible side effects i don't and i loved mm -hmm. it and it's mm -hmm. like so lovely but it's like a tranquilizer yeah you, you can't it's like a sedative you can't take it all the time because it can become habit forming so like when i was in real sleep crisis my psychiatrist would give me like 10 nights worth to take every now and then to reset myself but it couldn't be a long-term solution for me because you yeah yeah yep um but it doesn't it doesn't always have to be medication that helps yeah. you um i know for me like i have to i have to have the tv on because i have to have some sort of light i don't do well trying to fall asleep in complete darkness and um there's like certain things that we can put on that'll work either there's certain podcasts like the one that i was talking about before is the empty bowl which is a cereal podcast, but there's like ocean sounds in the background and they just talk about weird cereal. And it's, it's like just enough to keep my mind focused on it so that my brain isn't racing, mm -hmm. but not enough that I like feel like I have to stay awake to find out what happens next. Cause it's about cereal, you know? <laughs> um, so that's worked a lot for me. And there's also um, just like some YouTube channels like Drawfee, which it, it sounds weird. It's like artists drawing, but listening to them talk is very calming to me. Huh. So it's not like I'm watching the visual part, which is kind of what the point is, but the actual like yeah. talking is. Yeah. So yeah, specific things like that. There's a couple different channels that we rotate through that um, we'll watch. It. I use Headspace and I mm -hmm. use their sleep casts and I just discovered a new narrator who's, if you look up their sleep cast, if you're on Headspace, there's a narrator named Simon and it's mm -hmm. basically like having Richard Attenborough like narrate your fall asleep meditation is that his name richard attenborough yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing because he's got like a british accent and it's all like yeah yeah and i think i mentioned my tent before but i'll send you the link to it the tent i use if you're people who do need darkness and to have distractions eliminated and 
It's also good for folks with PTSD because it creates a feeling of safety is I have a tent. So it's basically like a pop-up bed tent and they make them for all sizes of beds. So I have a queen size one and you put it in your frame and then you set your mattress inside it on top of the bottom and then it just lifts up and yeah. Um, and the one, the brand I use that I really like, it's called Privacy Pop. And so um, I got the black one to help black out light more and um i'll send sam the link to that to put yep i'll put it down i'm gonna put all of the links to like whatever we talk about down in the description of the youtube video yeah um let's see i do trazodone my sleep cast for me it's what i had to do is stick to a really tight schedule i have to be rigid about it but how i started it was I, in the beginning, I couldn't be rigid about having a fall asleep time because that just increases frustration while you're laying in bed, which is really bad sleep hygiene. So instead, for the first couple of days, I just had a very fixed wake up time. Mm -hmm. So then I might only have a couple hours of sleep that day, but then that helped me get to bed earlier. And now what I do is now my times are one to nine. And so at 1230, my phone has a reminder go off that lets me know it's time to sleep. And if you have an iPhone, what it does, if you set your bedtime in the health app, it'll ask if you want to wind down. And I say yes. And what it does during the wind down is it automatically turns my phone to do not disturb and turns off all notifications. So That's not good. only yeah. will I not hear the chime, but I won't even see the visual notifications. And uh -huh. it keeps it that way all through your sleep and wake up time. Um, so that's helpful because then it's not distractions. So what I do now is at 1230, I get up, I start, I brush, floss, do my skincare. I've created this whole nighttime ritual. And then I leave my iPad out in the living room. I do not bring it into the tent with me. Um, and go in the tent, turn off the lights and start my sleep cast by one usually. And so I have to really stick to this rigid routine in the beginning. I'll probably mm -hmm. always have to stick to it, but I'm hoping after like, if I can keep this going several months that once the world reopens, I can like, cause like, I want to go see live music. And if I missed it a lot. Yeah. If it's past one. I don't care. Yeah. So hopefully I'll be able to do that occasionally and not have it jack everything up. But if it does, I know what to do. I'll just like start with the wake up time again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten to the point where like, I think because I've had some sort of routine for long enough now, I do actually get tired at like 930 at night, which like that was amazing when that started happening because I used to just be wired constantly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I get tired around 9.30 at night and I usually fall asleep between like 10 and 11. Weekends can vary, but that's generally where I'm at. And yeah, yeah. I get up at like six because that's about as long as I can stay asleep. <laughs> but yeah, I'm yeah. just thankful that something finally worked because... I was just always tired and that was not a good time. Being always tired is exhausting, which I know is, is duh, but it just is horrible. It's like the mm -hmm. worst feeling being cold, hungry, and tired. And like being tired made me really irritable and it just wasn't fun to be around me either. So <laughs> yeah. So is that all we have? I think so. It was a shorter one this week, folks, but that's okay because we showed up two weeks in a row. We did it. <laughs> Woo, it's a miracle. Um, but yeah, if you have, what should we, should we put a question to put to ask people that they can answer however they want about sleep? Yeah. yeah. Maybe in the comments or on the Instagram post, share like, your bedtime routine if you have one or had one yeah <laughs> before the, the covid and yeah let's do that let's do that and we'll be back in two weeks right sam two weeks yep two weeks okay bye everyone
Bye.